the axles came in way earlier than we thought, which is awesome. So we're going to go pick them up this morning. Um, we had to empty the bed of the truck so that we can actually fit them in there and bring them back. They're about 30 minutes away. So we're going to double check our measurements one more time on the axles. So because our Airstream is old and the way we had to mount it, the flange on the axle has to go up and then in. We added a, a lift kit. So the lift kit is going in right here and then the axle is actually bolting straight up into the bottom of the lift kit. So we have to have a piece, this piece that goes up and then across to bolt into. got the axles and the measurements look right and the angle looks right and the, the flange looks right so we loaded them up in the back and we're gonna take them back and try to get them installed. Turns out there is a problem with the axles. Uh, they sent us five lug instead of six lug. And all that means is uh, if you look here there's five studs to connect to and we actually need six. So they were ordered correctly. I don't know what happened. Uh, so we called the trailer place and they said they can replace the whole hub assembly with a six lug on it so that we don't have to wait another week or two while Dexter makes an entirely new set of axles. So we have to go back to the axle place tomorrow, drop these off, let them work on it, and then pick them back up. Our friends Juan and Michelle from beginning from this morning not only let us stay at their house while we were waiting on the axles, but they helped us install them too. They're the best. We hooked up and moved the Airstream out onto the street for easier access. We use the floor jack to gently lower the axle down and roll it out of the way. Then we put the new axle on the jack and rolled it back into place. Even with our lift kit, it's still a little tight under there. Crank the axles up until the holes matched and then put the bolts back in. We made sure to hand tighten the bolts to the right torque spec as the last step. The first axle went on without any issues, so we're going to wire it up, get the wheels on, and then do the next axle. Here we're using crimp connections and marine grade heat shrink to seal the wires up tight. Heat gun activates the glue and shrinks up the covering. We repeated the process for all the wires, and then it was time to put the tires back on. Always hand tighten your lugs first before using a tool so you don't strip them out. When you do use a tool, make sure you do it in the right star pattern. And, always make sure you do the wiggle test to make sure you've seated both the bearings and the tire properly. Finally, find your torque specs and hand tighten the lug nuts the rest of the way. Axle 1 is finished. Down the ramps and back up on the other axle.
After doing the first one, the second one went faster. We used the same process. We cut the brake cables, put the jack underneath, and undid the bolts. And then we lowered it and raised the new ones up. We did find a problem on this wheel. It was rocking just a little bit after our wiggle test, so we had to tighten the nut. You can see it's just a little bit loose. The last two wheels went on, and we tightened everything up. Time to take it for a test drive. I should mention here that the brakes didn't seem to be engaging even though everything was wired up properly. So we called our axle guy and it turns out with new hub assemblies, you have to drive 30 to 40 miles in stop and go traffic before the magnets seat properly. We drove for 15 minutes and could already tell they were getting better. We stopped to grab some lunch, did a temperature test, and it all looked good. 